So good morning, everyone. Sorry for the delay. And <clears throat> I'm Guo Huaxie from Wuhan University, China. Today I will uh, give you some uh, new aspect in light emitting devices. And my topic is about sensitized organic emitters for efficient electroluminescence. Here is the outline of my talk. Basically, I will give you some short introduction about uh, organic light emitting devices, and then I will show you how we can manage the astons in the organic emitters by introducing the phosphorescent sensitized fluorescence and later thermally activated delay fluorescence sensitized fluorescence. Just give you a brief introduction about all that because uh, it's very Number no. And now we are developing organic semiconductors, which is somewhat similar to inorganic semiconductors. We can use the, the band theory to describe the behavior of the astones. And we are composing the materials from organic synthesis and the devices somewhat like the sandwich structure. Now all that are very popular in smartphones for example, iPhone are introducing the OLED as the screen from 2017. And OLED can be very small. It can be used as a micro display. It can be flashbar. Mm -hmm. And we can use OLED as a lighting source. And in advance, we can introduce the Vitify light communication by using OLED as, as the light source. OLED can also be used as the light source for, for, treat, for treating the skin cancer. In principle, there are three kinds of the luminescence mechanism of uh, organic emitters. The first one is the very common one, which is regarded as fluorescence in such kind of materials, the triple astones are non-emissive because it is uh, forbidden. And in 1998, a group in the US, they developed the phosphorescent emitter by introducing the heavy matter into the complex. Therefore, we can harvest the astone, the triple astone via the inter-system crossing. And then in theory, you can achieve 100% internal quantum yield. And from 2029, a group in Japan, that is Kyushu University, developed a DA type molecule, which has to be very small, singly and triply gap and therefore, we can harvest the triple astone via the reverse inter-system crossing. And finally, we can harvest all of the electrically generated astones. In fact, highly emissive because there are many defects and they, they are not uh, very good at harvest the, the astones. And in our design, we use the sensitized, which is a aspect very high efficient astone harvesting ability. And in this case, we can harvest the astones from her horse via sensitizer and then finally transfer to the emitters. There are several kinds of as energy transfer, for example, first the energy transfer, that's the energy transfer. And in general, such kind of energy transfer can op optimize the optical property of the emitter. And in addition, the sensitizer are able to improve the electrical property. In our development, we are able to design the device via the dry process of wet process. For dry process, it's very 
popular in the factory now, people can use such kind of thermal thermally evaporated technology to prepare the OLED screens. There are several kinds of advantage. For example, they can develop very high efficiency device and the film is very homogeneous. It is very easy to reproduce the performance and they indeed provide very good year of the products. But the price, the, the price of the equipment is very high. And for example, if you want to develop very large area at low cost, we can introduce the wet process. For example, we can use the spin coating process, injet printing process to develop the devices. But anyway, there are some disadvantage. For example, it's challenging to control the homogeneity of the thin film. It's somewhat hard to reproduce the device performance. So in our, in our design, we are trying to develop highly efficient emitter by using the wet process. And in our first trial, we developed the fluorescent sensitized fluorescent emitter. In this work, we try to synthesize a molecule with the donor acceptor, donor uh, architecture as shown in slides and we are able to achieve very deep red emission. It is almost in uh, located in the near infrared region. For example, you can see that the emission peak is about 785 nanometer in film. However, the for the photoluminescence quantum years not as high as what we expect is only 11%. And in principle, we have to use a hose to dilute the emitter, otherwise it will be quenched by the, the high concentration of the emitter itself. As the emitter we develop is highly soluble in common organic solvents, so it's easy for us to develop the solution process scheme to fabricate the device. Before fabricating the device, we have to go through the photophysics to develop a highly emission, emitting layer. We have to consider the energy transfer between the horse and the gas. In this figure, we can see that CBP is a horse for the image for the near infrared emitter NZ2 and DPA. However, there's a very small overlap between the for, for between the and in this regard we introduce a indium complex which is very emissive and we can see that between the range between 500 and 700 nanometer, there's a large overlap between the iridium complex emission and the absorption of the NIR emitter. Therefore, we can see that the PLQI was improved from 11% to 15% by mix the iridium complex into the host gas system. And from the transient spectroscopy, Irradiant complex has to reduce 3.5 microsecond to 2.1 microsecond. 60 nanometer. Therefore, we can conclude that the Aston. Oh. 
sir, Z. I think uh, he has some uh, technical issues. Hello. Sorry, yeah, sir. My net my network is not stable. I will try again. Yeah. yeah. So from the right right hand side figure, we can see that the emission at the peak wavelength of seven seven hundred thirty nanometer was delayed by introducing the iridium complex because the iridium complex has, has a long delay lifetime at microsecond scale and by introducing the iridium complex into the host gas system we can see that at 730 nanometer the airstone lifetime was increased from 20 nanometer to 2.3 microsecond So let's go to this slide. This slide presents an overview of the energy transfer in the ternary emitter. First of all, CBP is a very common host. It has been for reasons the AAA are non-emissive, and the sensitizer basically is a phosphorescent emitter, which is highly emissive at the range of 565 nanometer. And the NIR emitter, which is in principle is a fluorescence emitter, the triple astones of the fluorescence is non-radiated, therefore the astone utilization ratio is poor. By introducing the sensitizer at the right-hand side, we can see that we can harvest the triple astone of the iridium complex via foster, foster resonant energy transfer because the heavy atom of iridium in the complex has a strong spin orbital coupling. Therefore, the energy can be transferred from the triple of the sensitizer to the singly of the fluorescent NIR emitter. And finally, we develop the device by uh, solution pressing, solution pressing the whole transporting layer. Here is PWPS. It's a very common semiconducting polymer. We can spin coat uh, the ternary emitter onto the PWPSS to improve the homo uh, to improve the film. Uh, geometry, we finally choose the thermal evaporation scheme to, to deposit the electron transporting layer, that is TMPYPB in our design. And finally, we develop a thin layer of LIQ as an electron injection layer and another layer of aluminum as the cathode. We can see that the device has an emitter of three components, that is host CBP, sensitizer IRBT2 ACAC, and the NIR emitter with a rate ratio of 90 to 10, with a rate ratio of 80 to 10, to 10, sorry for the mistake. And we can see that in the electroluminescent spectral, there's only a very small radio emission of the sensitizer, basically the uh, the emission range covering from 650 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. That's a very strong emission in the NIR region. And the external quantum efficiency is about 0.8%. It looks like a little bit poor, but in terms of NIR emitter, this value is one of the highest ever reported in 2018. And the second part of my talk is about the sensitized 
fluorescence emitter via thermally activated delay fluorescence emitter. As I mentioned previously, thermally activated delay fluorescence so in so it is TADF. We can develop a, a series of small molecule uh, dendrima of polymer TADF emitter. In this example, we develop the TADF polymers by introducing different kinds of the monomer. And we, for, for example, M1 is a TADF monomer. We change the concentration of the M1 in the polymers. Therefore, we have PCC DP 0 to 20. And from the photophysics study, we can see that the delay component, that's the red curve in the figure, the delay component of the polymer PCG DP is not very high. For TADL emit, if we observe a very high ratio of the delay component, it will be very highly emissive. And to improve this issue, we further mix the polymer with a horse MCP. We can see that due to the reduced quenching effect of the polymer itself, the delay component was improved. But that is only according to, to equal to the photoluminous quantum year of 80%. It's not 100% as what we expect. And we further introduce a TADF small molecule that is DMACDPCG to sensitize the polymer. As we can see in the table, the PAQY is up to 95%. That's almost 100%. We guarantee that is the optimized one what we, uh, in our design. And we can see that the K RSG, that's the rate constant of the reverse intersystem. Crossing it was improved by a factor of three. And according to the temperature experiment, we can see that the delay for resonance was improved steadily from 300, from 100K to 300K. And to conclude that we indeed improve the Aston utilization in our design. We develop the solution process device from the ITO glass, that is the anode of the OLED. And then we spin coat a layer of the semiconducting polymer, P door, PSS. And then we design three kinds of the emitter, that is the polymer itself and the device B consists of the host MCP and the polymer. And the device C is a ternary one with the host gas system and the sensitize, sensitizer. And finally, we deposit a layer of the electron transporting material, TMPYPB, to the emitter and followed by the lithium uh, green ring and aluminum as the castle from the electroluminescence spectra, we can see that there's only a very sh small shift of the emission profile. Nevertheless, when we introduce the emitter in the device C, we can see that the external quantum efficiency is over 16%. That is the highest one in the polymer-based TADF OLEDs ever reported in 2017. And the device A and device B has been somewhat similar uh, efficiency. So to further improve the sensitizing strategy, we combine a TADF component 
with a phosphorescence component into a single molecule because we haven't published this work, so I cannot uh, go into too much detail about the design. But from the photophysics, we can see that the blue component in the small molecule is highly emissive in the range of 400 and 550 nanometer. For the red component, we can see that the emissive band is about 550 and, and 700. By, by combining these two components into a single molecule, we can see that at the very beginning, and for example, in the first 10 nanoseconds, we can see that there are some residual blue emission between 400 and 500 nanometer. After 100 nanosecond, there's no residue emission of the sensitizer compo component. So this emitter is highly emissive and we can guarantee that it, it, it is internal quantum efficiency is up to 100% and we finally demonstrate an external quantum efficiency over 20%. In summary, in this talk, I present our development of the sensitized emitter for all that complex into the NIR fluorescent emitter, which has been aggregation in due uh, we introduced the TADF small molecule as the sensitizer for the TADF polymers, and we demonstrate one of the most efficient, one of the most efficient blue emitter in terms of TADF polymer. We can we can manipulate the intermolecular interaction between one single molecule, and finally we can demonstrate. 100% internal quantum efficiency and over 20% external quantum efficiency in a single molecule, which is solution processor. Finally, we can control the external behavior in different kinds of the emitter, and we are able to harvest the external by manipulating the energy transfer in the dough emitters. Finally, I would like to thank my collaborators that is uh, Professor Chu Luo Yang and Solon Gong in our department. And I also would like to thank the PhD students. Finally, I would like to thank the funding source which support my research. And that's my talk. Thank you very much for your kind attention.